Hi everybody, welcome to Watches with Dennis, and today I'm going to do a produced video on Brick Watch Company and what a joke this is. Now, I'm calling it a produced video because this actually did come up in a live stream. I used one of these watches to sort of describe a variety of turkey watches that I was going over in sort of the spirit of Thanksgiving, and I've learned a lot more since then. Now, Brick Watch Company is a newly announced company. It's set up by someone named Dave Portnoy. I wasn't familiar with him. I've had a few people write in since I did the live stream <laughs> explain to me who he is. He's known for Barstool Sports, which I have heard of that before. I'm not really familiar with it. It's not, not an area I focus on. But anyway, so he started up a watch company called Brick Watch Company, and they have a couple of models, and you should not be buying them. Obviously, it's just my opinion. I'm going to have links to the watches I'm talking about today, including the brick watches, in my show description so you can go and look at them. And if you disagree with me, feel free to make whatever purchase you want. But these are not a good deal. And that's my problem I have with it. Now, Dave recently put out a video. I'm not going to drop in the content here, but you can see the image of it that I saw on Twitter where he ranted for over eight minutes about all these people hating on his watches and on the watch company. Uh, and it, it's just sort of all over the place in terms of uh, a lot of it was really addressing people accusing him of running a scam of some sort. Uh, but I mean, he also attacks how people look. He attacks how they dress. Uh, he has some information in there, but it wasn't anything that to me was particularly meaningful because I'm not making an accusation here as to the authenticity of the company in terms of what he's doing with the charity or even how much he spent to develop and build the watches. My problem is, regardless of whatever he invested to get these watches created, the watches are too expensive and you should not buy them. And that is why it is such a joke. It is almost as if he put no time into actually researching the watch market and did not realize that he is dropping watches at price points that are way too high for what they are in a very crowded space with better deals. And that's my problem I have with it is this is not a good investment of your funds. And by investment, I don't mean in the literal make money by buying a watch sort of way. I mean, you would get more bang for your buck going with some other watches. And we're going to go over that. But in terms of the Brick Watch Company, if you go to their website and check out their story, you'll see information that... It's it's very much not geared towards watch enthusiasts, and I get that. But also, that's where the trap lies for people who are not into watches and don't understand what the value is versus what other companies are offering. And I think they can walk into, well, a trap and end up spending way more money on something that doesn't retain any value, isn't actually all that well-designed, in my opinion, and they could have just gotten a lot better product somewhere else. And so a lot of the story it really emphasizes a sort of concept of, you know, this is a watch for people that they can they can afford a Rolex. Don't think that they're poor. They it's an interesting message to me. It's like, don't you know, this is for this is like for rich people, but but they don't you know, they don't need to have the name brand Rolex on it. They don't need that status symbol on their wrist. Well, those of us who are into watch collecting or enthusiasts do understand that there are a lot of really high quality brands. And aside from watch enthusiasts, no one's going to know that it's a status symbol on your wrist, right? People aren't going to go and see that you have an Oris and go, whoa, that guy. Wow. He's, that's a, that's some status flex right there. I mean, a watch enthusiast will get excited about seeing an Oris, but most everyday people won't. And I mentioned Oris because they're going to come up as one of my examples today. So there are two watches that Brick Watch Company is currently producing. Both of them are in a couple of sizes. One is a chronograph, which is quartz powered. And then the other is a more conventional time plus date watch, which is a mechanical automatic. So let's start with the quartz one. I'm going to pull one here with a blue dial. It's the Chrono Diver 22 is the name of the watch. Uh, you can get it in either 42 millimeters or 38 millimeters. The specifications are pretty straightforward. It's using a Ronda Quartz movement, sapphire crystal, 100 meters of water resistance, and it offers the three sub dial configuration, kind of the Mickey Mouse configuration is, is how I would often describe it. A uh, date window at the controversial, I would say, four o'clock position. I mean, a lot of people don't like date windows, at least enthusiasts don't like date windows that are not sitting at the six or the three, but you know, your mileage may vary, and I personally don't actually mind this particular configuration. I think this watch, by and large, looks all right. 
Uh, the always earned, and that's part of the story that's explained. I don't like that down at the six o'clock position. I don't really like the font used for the 12, but it's not offensive to me. I don't like the font used for Brick Watch Company, but again, it's very, very subtle. So, you know, okay, it looks all right. To me, it looks all right as a watch. Like, I wouldn't be upset at wearing a chronograph that looks like this, but I would be upset if I was paying $2,399, which is the price for either the 42 or 38 millimeter version. There is no price difference. So $2,400 for a quartz powered chronograph is a whole lot of money. Let us consider a couple of other options that people could really explore and I think get a lot more mileage out of. So let's start with Seiko, very famous company. They do a lot of mechanical watches now, but they still play a lot in quartz. And I'm going to use a solar example. In fact, both of my examples will be solar, but this is the SSC 445. This quartz watch is solar charged. We still have the configuration of the subdials. I think the watch layout looks a lot more attractive. Controversial again with the date window, this time more in the 430 position. However, they did frame it here. So I think it feels very, very strongly defined versus what we got with the Chrono Diver, which is just sort of an unframed cutout window. And then... It's also here, the Seiko is 100 meters of water resistance, so we still got that. Obviously, because it's solar powered, we're running off of a quartz movement. And I just think it's a really nice looking watch. The price here on the website from Seiko is $395. So we are talking $2,000 less than what Brick Watch Company is offering. Okay, let's say that Seiko isn't your cup of tea. Let's go ahead and pull from another Japanese manufacturer, Citizen. My very first quote-unquote nice watch I ever had was a Citizen chronograph. It wasn't an EcoDrive, but this one is. This is one of the Peyton watches that they do. And so, again, you see I've gone with blue dial, nicely defined subdials. Once again, 430 date, but again, framed as well, unlike the brick watch. This is also 100 meters of water resistance. So, again, I'm giving you a swimmable chronograph option to consider and the price point on this watch is $396. It's marked down currently on the Citizen site. Normally, it's $495. So again, it's $1 more, at least at the time of this recording, than the Seiko I just showed you. So again, it's also $2,000 less. And this is a very well-respected brand, as is Seiko, very well-established. And there's nothing ostentatious about wearing a Seiko or a Citizen. They're very nice, attractive-looking watches. They offer the same functionality that Brick Watch Company is presenting to you, and they're $2,000 less. You're not going to lose your shirt on this sort of purchase. Let's say you were buying this as a gift, which is something that was suggested in that rant video at the start of it that I linked from Dave. If you were to go and buy these as a gift and the gift wasn't liked, it's, it's not nearly as big of a deal, right? One, it's going to be easier to actually unload these watches on the secondhand market because people actually know what Citizen and Seiko are. And second, even if they didn't, even if you're just out everything, you're not even out $500. So it's a lot easier bullet to bite than a case of a $2,400 chronograph from a no-name company. Now, the other watch that Brick Watch Company is offering is what they call the Classic 22 this is also a $2,400 watch, or more specifically, $2,399. Again, offered in 42 and 38 millimeter. Pricing doesn't change yet again on either of those sizes. They come in a few dial colors. I'm showing you the black dial with the gray markings. And this is powered by Salita SW200 automatic movement. Now, the Salita SW200 is a workhorse movement. It's in a lot of lower-end watches. It's also in a lot of higher-end watches. There are various grades of Salita, just like with ETA. There are tiers that you can get with this sort of movement in terms of how accurate it will be. Obviously, you can decide whether or not you're going to do additional finishing, all of that sort of stuff. Again, 100 meters of water resistance on this watch. So other than not being a chronograph and being automatic instead of quartz, a lot of this is the same. It's the same dial size. It's the same price point. It's the same water resistance. You can see, I actually dislike this watch more visually. Again, that's an aesthetic decision. Always Earned is yet again there taking up, it feels like way more space or it's at least a lot more noticeable because it's up towards the middle of the dial, which I do not like. Date window this time is at the three o'clock position, which will be a lot more accepted by most, at least watch enthusiasts. Uh, it does feel maybe a little cramped though, putting it right there by the three, which doesn't necessarily seem to have been resized in any way to configure for that. I don't like the font of the numerals at all. I 
I, I, to me, it just looks like a miss. And I've already criticized how I think the Brick Watch Company logo looks in terms of that. I feel like we're just using default fonts out of Windows here, but you know, you might feel differently. So, okay, $2,400 for this sort of time plus date basic watch. What else can you get? Well, a lot, obviously, but if we're going to stick with movements that are sort of in the spirit of the SW200, let's talk about a couple of Swiss options that are out there. One I'm going to mention here, which I mentioned on my live stream because it was a watch I actually owned at one point, though not in this particular color configuration, is the Tudor 1926. So not exactly the same sizing. You can get it in a 41 millimeter or you can get it in a 39 millimeter versus the 42 and 38 of the brick watch. But again, you're in the same general range. Time plus date. You can kind of see that it's got that gray or silver look to the indices. I think the font use is way better here. You've got this interesting textured waffle pattern on the black dial itself. And this watch by Tudor is powered by what they call the caliber T601. At one point in its past, I believe the Tudor 1926's caliber was based off of an ETA. And now I believe it is based off of the Salita SW200, but modified by Tudor. And I'd say one of the main notable things about it that they're known for is, while they do not send this movement in for cost certification, because that would add to the cost, they do regulate it to the degree that it should be cost accurate. And the one I had was on my time grapher within cost specification. So you get a very accurately tuned movement. It's got all the, all the other features you would want compared to that brick watch. It's got the sapphire crystal. It's got the 100 meters of water resistance. It's got the date function in the same general position. It's just a better watch at less money. This is a $2,000 retail priced watch at 41 millimeters. It is less if you reduce the size down to the 39. I think it drops about 50 bucks. So again, and that's without going and negotiating, which you can do on these sort of big name watch brands. Tudor, often known as the baby brother company to Rolex. Again, this is not going to be seen as a big status flex of you to wear a 1926. So getting back to the brick watch company story about not wanting to go out there and wear these watches for the sole purpose of trying to have a status symbol, you would have a very nice watch, very well built, very respected company. And again, if this is a watch that you or the person you're giving it to does not like, this is not a difficult watch to unload. So again, it's just a better option. All around, this is a better option. So let's say you're not all that into that Tudor's look specifically, but we're gonna kind of keep things in the same vein. So let's pull from Oris. Let's look at the Big Crown Pro Pilot Big Date. Okay, so yet again, date window at the three o'clock. I've got a black dial version here on display. Very clean, easy to read Arabic numerals. Again, I think all the font choices are vastly superior on this Oris than they are versus Brick's Classic 22. Again, automatic movement. Oris refers to this as the 751, but they note that that is a base Salita 220. So it's a little bit different Salita, but again, a Salita nonetheless. A lot of the same general specifications that you would you would expect from a Salita movement and the same as the brick in terms of the 38-hour approximate power reserve and such. But again, just to me, a much better finished looking watch. I think what's going on around the exterior with the bezel is far more interesting than anything we see on the brick watch. But if you felt that the waffle pattern on the Tudor 1926 was a little too distracting, occupying so much of the dial, this offers a lot more staid sort of flat matte black look and also comes in at a lower price point. This is a 41 millimeter watch. So again, much like the Tudor 1926, it's one millimeter smaller than what the brick was listed at. The price point is also significantly lower with Oris's website listing this as a $1,900 watch. Yet again, steel bracelet, and yet again, 100 meters of water resistance. So I'm giving you an example of something that has all of the features that Brick Watch Company is trying to sell you at a better price point from a better respected known brand and all the value that comes with that, be it trying to get rid of the watch later and resell it, be it the designs that go into it from actual watchmaking professionals. And so that's why, in summary, I think the Brick Watch Company is a joke. These watches are a joke. The price points are ridiculous. The designs are not inspired. You can find other very straightforward, clean design, non-ostentatious watches at better price points from better brands. There's no reason to turn to something like this. This is a crowded space, and I feel Brick Watch Company walked into a proverbial brick wall with a decision to even launch doing something like this. 
But those are my thoughts. I'd enjoy to read yours down below. So leave a comment if you have anything you'd like to say about either Brick Watch Company or maybe the example watches I listed. Do you guys have any example watches that you think are competitive with the sort of design motif? either the chronograph version or the time plus date version that Brick Watch Company has presented that you think are good alternatives for potential shoppers to consider? If so, maybe leave those down below so people can research them. And I will say thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys on the next video. Take care, everybody.